Well, it's finally happening, folks. After two years of the pandemic, virtually all restrictions easing in New South Wales and Victoria. But in the last hour, the World Health Organization posted this warning to countries reopening right now. But I'm a bit nervous <laughs> right now that we're sort of just lifting everything. If we get hit with another variant, if we, and we've already sort of abandoned all measures, it's going to be really hard to put anything back in place. <sighs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> For more, we're joined by ALP National President Wayne Swan and 6PR's Gareth Parker. Nice to see you both this morning. But look, you know, Wayne, we, we all want our lives back right. We but do. as the World Health Organization points out, it, there's still a risk that comes with that. Absolutely. And, you know, as we, as we go forward, uh, there is the possibility of another variant. So as we ease restrictions, we ought to bear in mind there are some basic cautions that we should observe. Uh, mask wearing in some circumstances is one of them. Another one is making sure that we've had our third dose. Uh, another one is that Premier Andrews has raised today is why are we letting people into the country uh, without three doses. So I think basic precautions are still necessary. It's great that we're opening up. It's great that we can do that for economic and social reasons. I think the return to school uh, has gone very well. But we still do need to be cautious and have a plan for the winter or the unexpected. So, Wayne, are you saying that you want to see um, all people, come, travellers coming into Australia, have three doses when we know that there are plenty of countries that don't even have a booster program? That's right. Uh, because we do need to protect our country. So that point has been made by Premier Andrews today. I think, it is, uh, I think it's a serious miscalculation on the part of our national authorities. But anyway, uh, we'll see what the medical uh, advice is. I think Atagi is basically arguing for three doses. Mm. Are you happy to pick up the phone and talk to some of those tourism operators in Cairns and, and tell them that? Well, it'll be no good for any operator anywhere if we end up in, uh, uh, with another variant into the country very quickly and we have to mm. shut down. Gareth, your thoughts on what Wayne's just said? Well, I mean, I, talking about the WHO dropping all restrictions, we'd love to get to that point in Western Australia. We're a few months behind everyone else in the country. We obviously still have a closed border. Uh, masks are compulsory inside. So the announcements that are happening in Victoria and New South Wales aren't applicable to this third of the continent. Mm. Um, if there is another variant that emerges, then you adjust. I don't think you keep restrictions that aren't needed at a moment in time. I think you allow people to try and live as normally as possible. That's got to be the goal, doesn't it? Uh, and if the future changes, then you change your policy settings at the time. I don't agree with the WHO medical director that it's impossible to put things back on. It's not. Mm. Uh, but equally, if you continue to restrict people longer than is necessary, then they'll give you the middle finger. <laughs> that is that's true. Serious. I mean, that's just saying it straight, isn't it? I mean, and it must be a very foreign conversation to you right now when you're still waiting for a decision on what's going to happen with your border. But look, um, one of the big changes that, that is being discussed over East is, is um, the call to end working from home. So what do you think about this one, Wayne? Because it is tricky where we need to revive the CBDs, but people have also got used to having the flexibility yeah. and a bit of a better work-life balance. Sure, and I, I think this is going to be a matter that will be negotiated and discussed at the, uh, at the office level, at the work site level. Uh, I think the genie's out of the, out of the bottle here. Um, it will be good if we can get people back to the CBDs. I've been through a few of them recently. It would be fantastic if we can get a bit more economic activity. But I think there has been a fundamental change in the Australian workforce and there is a pretty strong desire uh, for parts of the workforce to work from home at least for some days each week. Carl and Ali, the buzz is building in Melbourne. <laughs> You're just feeling the music, aren't you? <laughs> that took you back to 88, didn't it? I am. <laughs> hey, look, how important do you think these changes are for Victorians? Well, as I was saying, the buzz is definitely building in Melbourne. These rule changes tell us that it's safe to come back into crowded environments and it's OK to boogie the night away again. It really says a lot about moving us from COVID caution to COVID confidence and we need all of that here in Melbourne and Victoria. Sally, um, not everyone is happy um, with businesses calling for masks to go as well. Well, we are waiting next week for the rules, Carl, to change. We've seen back to school happen successfully and we want back to workplace to uh, start again here in Melbourne. Uh, critical to changing the work from home advice is 
uh, looking at those mask at desk uh, rules mm. and that's something we've been in discussions with the government about. We know that that's a deterrent to people returning to workplaces and as we really start to open again and we can see the city starting to bloom again, uh, it is important to wipe away as many of those bar barriers, loosen the shackles, we're saying, <laughs> here in Melbourne and let us get on with it. Well, oh, Sally, as you would know, you mean, the work from home rules um, haven't changed yet. Um, that's probably expected in the next week, as you say. But do you think it's, it's going to be difficult because a lot of people have got used to the flexibility of, of, of being able to work from home and that's come with a lot of benefits? Mm. Well, we are all for embracing flexible working, uh, but of course we need people back in the city. Mm. Ali, we say that the rhythm of our city has changed and we're seeing that already. Uh, Wednesday's now our busiest day, midweek. But we're also seeing on the weekends in some parts of the city like South Bank and Ligon Street, their foot traffic on weekends are actually above pre-pandemic levels. So we are uh, noticing people's new habits and we're willing to embrace them. We just want to run towards that new rhythm as quickly as possible because this time of ongoing, ongoing uncertainty is the hardest for our traders. Sally, it'd, be a big, it'd make a huge difference if the public service came back to the CBD, wouldn't it? Yes, so uh, as those rules start to change next week, Carl, we're hoping to be lockstep in with New South Wales, the two biggest cities, biggest state economies in Australia, um, that we get a clear indication. I would love emphatically for the Premier mm. to back his team into returning to the workplace. There are parts of our city where uh, little businesses just won't open until they see our Victorian public service back. We had our team coming back last week and I know it made an enormous difference to the cafes around here, around Town Hall. Well, look, um, I mean, it's going to be so good to see people back in, in, in the Melbourne CBD, Sally. No one's fought harder than you to get that happening. Um, good luck with it and let's hope, the, you know, the numbers stay pretty steady. Thanks, Sally. Good luck on the D floor tonight, Thanks, Sally. Thanks, Carl and Ali. Mm, it is Friday. Yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> there she <Open>. goes. <laughs> There are hopes this morning WA could reopen its border in time for the AFL season. Nine's Olivia Donaldson is in Perth. Olivia, good morning. Mark McGowan will be looking at three things when he considers whether to open up. Good morning, Alex. He sure is. Mark McGowan hasn't give West, given West Australians an exact date yet, but says that WA's booster coverage as well as kids' vaccination rates as well as infection numbers on the East Coast will all underpin when the hard border comes down. Now, when the Premier cancelled the Feb 5th opening date last month, he said he wanted a third dose target of about 80 to 90 per cent coverage. Now, the state's booster shot coverage is currently sitting just above 50 per cent. But there is also speculation that the date could be as soon as March 14 in time for the AFL season to begin. But Alex, uh, infection rates are rap uh, rapidly rising here. Yesterday we recorded 177 local cases. Goes up and up. Olivia, thank you. Hey, uh, international borders reopened this Monday and a number of airlines, including Emirates, are dramatically increasing flights to and from Australia to mark the milestone. Barry White from Emirates joins us now live in Sydney. Barry, nice to see you this I morning. Think it's Barry Brown. <laughs> Everybody loves you, baby. <laughs> I can't get enough of your love, baby. <laughs> <laughs> She was captivated, Baz. It was captivated. really was. Hey, um, <laughs> and very quick, by the way, Barry, very quick indeed. Thanks, um, yeah, we know that there's going to be a huge surge in, in seats now available to and from Australia. Do you reckon you're going to be able to fill them? Well, it's a challenge for us, but, um, you know, Emirates over the last uh, 35 years of being in operation has faced many challenges before. So whether it's been a, a pandemic or Icelandic volcanoes, SARS, Gulf Wars, uh, we tend to respond fairly well to these challenges. Uh, there's going to be a thousand seats a day coming into Sydney and out of Sydney uh, when we had the second day 380 on the 1st of March. Wow. So we're really coming out of hibernation at the moment. Um, I mean, it's, it's a big task to get everything uh, worrying again, isn't it? Um, it was only a few weeks ago the US warned Australia was a high-risk travel destination. That doesn't help, does it? It d definitely doesn't help. Definitely doesn't help. But there's a, a pent-up demand there and, and people are, are looking to travel. Yeah. We added the second A380 and already the, 
uh, booking load factor has, has been very promising. So, but there's still a lot of seats still to fill. So you think that travel warning will deter international travellers coming here? Well, I don't think so. I think there's a lot of people that need to travel. Um, they, they want to start travelling again. Uh, the Australian government has, has made the right noises. Um, Tourism Australia has, has now embarked on a very large campaign. So, you know, you have, you have to plan these things in advance. And we're really looking to just keep continuing to grow. Uh, we added a 380, uh, A380 aircraft onto Melbourne and uh, Brisbane also in February. So. You, you, you have to ramp these things up and you, it's building blocks. So you build a base load and then you start adding uh, and there's more borders open up around the world. Uh, we're looking to capitalise on that. Barry, um, the, the flights are, are, can be pretty expensive um, at the moment. Um, when do you think they might um, come off a little bit, become well, more affordable? You know, they're affordable, I'll say. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's been a lot of media reports about... Uh, price gouging. Um, I don't see that that we've been operating. Um, you know, we've got a great partnership with Qantas that we work with overseas, and um, our prices are quite reasonable. So, look, I mean, how are you feeling about about the next sort of 12 to 24 months, considering what we've been through the past few years? Well, you know, it's uh, I've been in this game since 1975, so this has been the <laughs> worst two years I've I've ever known. Um, and, you know, we're, just as we're starting to get back at the moment, we're seeing oil prices go through the roof. Yeah. So there's another challenge there for us. But, uh, you know, as I said, 35 years, we're, we're used to meeting these challenges and we'll, we'll continue to do so. This is a big one, isn't it? Um, what might that do um, in the coming, um, you know, days, weeks and months um, if oil keeps going up? Well, it's, it, it's a problem now. You know, it's getting up close to the $100 a barrel point. Um, we'd love it to be around seventy dollars a barrel. In fact, anywhere south of that would be mm. terrific. But uh, it's it's a challenge for us, and um, you know we, we just need to keep filling those aircraft, and, and that's the way we can sort of counterbalance the uh, the rise in fuel. Hard to cop a break, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> just one thing after another. Yeah, um, but but we're good at it. We're opening up one hundred and thirty destinations, so you know transiting over Dubai, our hub gives us a good advantage. Mm. So with 130 mm. destinations feeding into Australia and, and outbound, uh, that helps us with our flights. It's a great airline. Um, Barry White, good to talk to you. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for your time. You've Thank always you. got that career to fall back on anyway. <laughs> he was ready Thank you very much. <laughs> he was properly ready for that. Uh, look, it's been a tough time for you, mate. You're, you're a terrific mm. bloke. Um, all the very best. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, Thank you. Well, more now on the major easing of restrictions across Victoria and New South Wales today. We are joined by the owner of Rache's, Rami Yikmore, who's in South West Sydney, as well as the owner of the big group, Bruce Keebor in Melbourne. Nice to see both your handsome faces this morning. Hey, Rami. Rami, we'll go to you first because there's going to be no more QR codes and density limits scrapped for hospitality. What's your reaction? It's amazing news, Ali. Honestly, like we are, the staff are jumping out of their skin. It's going to be great for the confidence of our, uh, for the customers, for our staff, for small business. It's just going to change everything. Like people, people are so excited. My staff are really, really excited about the news. So just give me an idea of what difference it's going to make for your business and, and how quickly you think now that this is coming in, you can get back to those pre-pandemic levels. Ali, honestly, as of last night, we've already seen booking change for this weekend and it's going to change service. And what I mean by that is, like, instead of meeting a customer now and saying, can you, can you um, barcode in or can you mm. QR code in? Now it's like, how was your day? How was your night? How, how are you going? It's more that, you know, it's, we're getting back to a normality and that's what we want, that's what we need and that's what we're like in a, in a hospitality business. That's what we need. I mean, we're, we're getting back to that normal, but we're also being warned that this isn't going to be the end of it, that come winter, are you ready for that, that, you know, in a couple of months' time you might need to, and I don't want to put a dampen on it on day when you're very excited, but, you know, that we, we might get to a point coming into winter that some of those restrictions will come back? Look, Ali, we just got to take it a day, a day at a time. That we look, things can come back, but we've got to be optimistic. I think we've got to be very confident. We've got to stay optimistic, and we've got to look forward. It's something we've got to live alongside of this this COVID thing, unfortunately. And you know, it's been two years now, and I think yeah, you know, we just got to pray that things stay the way it is at the moment. Yeah. Hey, look, let's go to you, Bruce, in Melbourne. Um, so similar kind of changes um, to New South Wales, but a few differences. Um, density limits, they've been scrapped. But QR code's going to remain for hospitality. What do you make of that particular decision? 
Well, I'm not sure, Ellie. It feels like the hospitality industry is still this punching bag down here. You can go to Ikea and have 4,000 people and maybe put the music on there and have a bit of a dance. But for the poor old hospo trader who's got 20 people in his cafe, we're still QR checking in. So there's a few things that have to happen. We've got to dump this mask and we've got to get people back to work to get these businesses alive. So I'm so thrilled for New South Wales and that sector, but we're still fighting a very slow fight down here with COVID caution. So you were pretty disappointed. I mean, no decisions on masks for at least another week. Um, disappointing for you? Well, don't get me wrong. You know, I'm in the, 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 the weddings, parties, major events industry. I'm thrilled to see the density caps go and I'm thrilled to see people back on the dance floor. But what Victoria needs is corporate confidence. And until we get the government sector's workers back, major corporate Australia are not going to send their workers back. So the guy who's got the cafe in town and the lady who's got the, you know, the, the boot maker at the bottom, they are doing it so tough. So whilst those things have changed, until we get people back to work and masks off at the desk, we don't have any corporate confidence in this town. So business is still suffering because of inertia and slow decision making. So we've well, got to change it. Well, there are going to be conversations um, taking place this week and, and hopefully you'll get a bit of clarification around masks and workers back in the city. But, but that is critical, isn't it? Getting people back into the city. 100%. But what is also critical is having a really clear plan. It's called strategic decision making. And I'd have no problem that on, you know, yesterday we had this decision with a clear plan of what was happening the week after. It's the inability um, we seem to find of just having a strategic plan so that businesses can actually look forward and the consumer confidence mm. that I think we feel in New South Wales, we want to feel down here too. All right, but it is Friday. So, Bruce, I mean, Friday night. It's going to be a big one. Yep. Ali, I'm going to get the DJ down at Ikea where you can have 4,000 people in the store and not QR code check-in. So let's get it going down there, I reckon. Well, Rami, you got that look in your eye, mate, that it's going to be a fun Friday night. We appreciate you both joining us this morning. Thank you. Enjoy the weekend. Carl.